I can't help but really feel, if I'm honest, um, the greeting cards are kind of a waste of money. Uh, they get bought, sent to somebody, people go, ah, that's really nice, tear it up, throw it in the bin. Uh, I've never really been much of a fan, I don't buy them for other people, uh, I tend to therefore not receive many myself either. Um, and so I've often looked at companies like Car Company and thought, well, how do these guys survive? But I guess there's enough crazy people in this planet to uh, to let any business survive in its, in its way. Um, so there you go. But today, we are going to take a look at Card Factory PLC. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the FTSE Show with me, Chris Chillingworth. This is the show where we dissect and take apart uh, companies looking for companies that are likely, the odds are high, that they're going to grow 300 to 400% in share price value over the next 10, 20 years. That means we're looking for companies where the share price will grow on average around 15% a year. And we're looking for certain metrics, certain um, things that I look for that indicate this may be a company that can achieve that. And the scoring that we do here on the board reflects that. So if they score highly on this, it's because they've ticked all those boxes. They've met all those metrics that I'm looking for that generally speaking reflect share price growth over the long term. Not necessarily over the next week or the next month, but over 10 years, maybe five years. Who knows? But um, And we're also on this show, we're looking at all different kinds of companies. We're looking at the good we're looking at the fantastic. We're also looking at the downright ugly. And um, that gives perspective, you know, because if you're just looking at the good, you don't necessarily know why it's good. When you're looking at bad companies and then a company comes along and smash all the numbers can make a massive difference. And you then you start to realize when you've got a list of, say, 10, 20, even 40 companies that are ticking all your boxes, you know that what you've got there is very, very good value. When those companies are beating the FTSE 100 by 20% this year, you know you've got great companies. And so I want to share the whole spectrum on this show. That's what it's all about. Um, and sometimes it's just good to kind of have a good old dig at some of these really underperforming companies as well as the really, really good exciting companies that we all want to be throwing our money into. Today we're going to take a look at a company called Card Factory PLC. Uh, these guys make greeting cards, they do personalised gifts, all that kind of stuff. You would have seen their stores probably in your, your local high street, uh, or at least the high street of the big kind of major towns and cities. Um, as I say, I'm not a big supporter of this particular brand. I'm not really into what they do, uh, but I'm more interested in the numbers. So let's dive into those numbers and take a look at what they're doing. Okay, let's take a look at Card Factory. Epic code is C-A-R-D. These guys are in the FTSE small cap sector, or the index, sorry, and they're in the retail sector, of course. So Card Factory PLC, uh, they, they make greetings cards they sell greetings cards through their stores um looking at the revenue the revenue has been surprisingly encouraging actually uh i'm not i wasn't expecting big things from card factory i i struggle to see uh, i know there's a lot of people in the world mad about cards uh, but i'm not one of them and surprisingly they they're doing really well uh in terms of revenue at least we can see here since uh, the float on the London Stock Exchange uh, back in uh, probably 2013, the float would have started. Uh, we started getting reports from the 2014 January 2014 report, and uh, 326 million back then, and then 330, sorry, 353 up to 381, 398. Then they breached the 400 million a year mark at 422. And in 2019, it went up to 436. So every single year of the last six years since the float, they've increased the revenue, which is good. It means they've able to find new ways to bring in more money from their customers. And that's uh, not, not, many, not every company can do that. So uh, that goes in their favor. Of course, we like to see that growth. That's going to help with share price growth for sure. But it doesn't tell you a whole picture. And when you rely on revenue alone, it's when you get bitten. And uh, let's dive further down into this then and take a look at the cost of sales and what impact that has on that revenue. And as you can see, in terms of the gross profit, 2014, uh, they, the gross profit was 101 million. They went up to 113 million in 2015, so that's good. Then we saw another rise to 126 million in 2016. But then since then, since 2016, over the last four years, 
that gross profit hasn't really budged anywhere. So whilst we've seen that growth in revenue, the cost of sales has grown at a uh, just the same rate to keep the gross profit exactly the same at 126 million every year. 2018 actually saw a dip down to to, to 117, but then 2019 saw that recover back to 127. So uh, it's just been stuck there. Last four years, we've not seen any growth there in terms of the gross profit. So revenue's going up, but the cost of sales went up with it. And as a result, the company are not taking any slight, any larger amount of profit at all over the last four years. However, expenses have gone up. And we can see over the last four years, expenses went from 37 million to 56 million a year. Uh, and that's been steadily increasing year by year since 2016. And so that's an, that's, that's an issue because obviously we've got revenue growing the cost of sales growing at the same rate. As a result of that, gross profit has kind of capped at 126, 127 million every single year. But expenses have been rising over that period of time. So that's not good. That means probably that we're going to see less profits off the back of that. Uh, looking at the operating profit, that will give us an indication of, of that. Uh, we can see we've gone from 80, 89 million a year operating profit down to 87, down to 75, now down to 70. So we're looking at about uh, what's that? Nearly twenty million dropped in the last four years, uh, or five million a year operating profit falling. So that's not good in itself. Uh, interest on expense, interest on debt isn't really a huge issue. We're looking at four million a year on that, so it's no big deal. Um, so then I'll come straight down to the actual net earnings of the business. And the first couple of years since the float, they did all right, 5.6% and then 9.4%. So they're okay, they're respectable. So many companies come in who end up doing very, very well on the, the stock exchange, uh, come in as an IPO on the first couple of years with some negative and some, some losing years. Uh, Card Factory didn't do that. They made profits and they did all right. Uh, and since then, it's it's been okay. But 2016, we saw 17.4% net earnings. Then we've fallen to 165 in 2017. Then in the next year, 2018, we've dropped down to just shy of 14%. And now we're down to just shy of uh, 12%, actually 11.8%. So uh, we've seen the net earnings falling year on year over the last four years. And that is likely to be attributed to the fact that whilst revenue is growing, uh, uh, the cost of sales is growing at the same rate and expenses is increasing. And so therefore profits are falling. And we've seen that fall from 66 million in 2016 to 51 million in 2019. And the concern, I suppose, because 51 million is still okay, still not too bad. The concern there is the trend, the underlying trend there that the last four years uh, net earnings have been falling at a rate of about five million a year. So that's a concern because if you're looking to 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 jump on a company for the next 10, 20 years uh, and you want to see share price growth over that period of time, sub, 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 you want to see significant share price growth over that 10, 20 year period. You know, we're looking for 300, 400 percent growth in share price if you're going to hold a company for that long you really want to be getting sort of 15 percent a year ideally out of these companies that's what we're looking for that's the kind of uh the sweet spot the, the, the kind of golden company that we and they they exist we've ridden them already um some of the watch list stocks have done exactly that uh and so we're looking for that those, those kind of companies that tick those boxes and when you've got a company here like card factory where the profits are falling not rising over the last four years the odds of this company being a 300 400 percent share price growth company over the next 10 or 20 years it the odds drop dramatically because the 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 the, the profits are falling and so that's what puts me off you know still 2019 you look at 2019's data in isolation and you think okay they're doing all right they're not bad you know just shy of 12 percent net earnings that's okay but when you look at the bigger picture in the last four years and the trend that's moving in the wrong direction then i start to get concerned that they're not the sort of company that i'm personally looking for um, coming down to the balance sheet we can see that uh, the current ratio is relatively healthy at 1.3 uh, total current liability is sitting at 72.3 million total current assets at 92 million so that's okay that's no big deal um, looking at the uh, they've got a, a large chunk of their assets are intangible assets like rights licenses that sort of thing uh, and then we come down to the the outstanding debt 
Uh, they're only borrowing £100,000 on the short term, so that's pretty much nothing. Uh, and then long term, it's a bit of a different situation. We're looking at £143 million. Uh, this is the company, remember, that's making, as of 2019, £50 million a year. And so carrying a debt level of £143 million a year is fine. It would take them about 2.8 years to pay that off if they were to pay it all off with the profits. That's not what the company will obviously do on a practical sense, but it gives us a measure of how much they borrow in relative to their earnings power. And this would indicate that the amount that they're borrowing is absolutely fine. We've got no concerns over that at all. Um, and then we come down to retained earnings. Now, as we can see, this retained earnings picture is not particularly great. We take a look at shareholder equity. Shareholder equity has not been a very pretty picture either. Uh, we've dropped from 282 million in equity. That's assets minus liabilities equals equity. Uh, 282 million in value in 2015, down to 265, down to 249, down to 218, back up to 227, but we have dropped off quite considerably uh, a good 60 million in value over the last five years. So that again, Another concern that the valuation or the, the equity, the book value of this company has been falling over the last five years. Again, that's not a sign of a company that's going to tick my boxes personally. I'm um, looking at retained earnings back in 2015, sitting at 70 million. Next year, down to 55, then down to 40, then down to 15. And the last year went back up by 2.8 million to 18.7 million. Um, but again, we're way down from the 70 that we're in at 2015. And so, again, over the last five years, you're looking at about 50 million drop in retained earnings, which when you started at 70 is quite substantial. It's quite a, a huge amount of your retained earnings dropped off. Um, so, again, there's some trends there, declining trends over the last four or five years that are a concern for me. So let's go and take a look at the chart. Okay, and this is the kind of chart I would expect to see with the numbers that we've just looked at. So, as you can see, um, the this is a monthly chart. We start in, uh, what is that, G May, May 2014. Uh, we start at a price of £2.20 a share was the flotation price. And uh, we saw the price rise all the way up to highs of four pound a share and that was in october 2015 so this is in line with the data right the first couple of years we saw some growth up to 2015 when that's when the decline started to happen in terms of not in terms of revenue revenue's been increasing but in terms of the uh, expenses increasing the profits therefore declining the retained earnings declining the equity in the company declining, all of these things going in the wrong direction. And as I said to you, that's exactly the opposite of what we're looking for because uh, we want a company that's going to grow free 400% over the next 10, 20 years. We need to see growth in the company. We need to see things moving in the right direction. And whilst numbers don't always tell you the full picture of a company, they give you a pretty good idea of what's going on because if... Uh, if the numbers are going down, then it means something's not going right. And then if the numbers are going up, it means that something they're doing something right, okay? So you might not necessarily have your finger on the pulse on exactly what the story is behind the business, but you get a pretty good indication that things are going well or things are not going well. And with Card Factory, you have to say, since 2015, things do not look like they've been going well. We've dropped from £4 a share to today's price of just 50 pence a share. Now, if you were to take away... 2020 and the events of 2020 which has had you know there was no fault of card factories whatsoever uh and therefore you know we could kind of dial it back i suppose and get to uh january where we had no 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 indication of the uh the events of 2020 at that point nothing had really happened we were still sub one pound a share by that point sitting at about 88 pence a share all the way from four pound a share back in 2015 back at the peak 2015 and those numbers that we just looked at were all in a decline and as a result of that we're seeing the share price do exactly the same thing this is exactly what i expected to see from the share price and this is why i personally don't invest in companies like that when companies are posting results like that that are going in the wrong direction you know sure there might be some rumors that card factory about to turn it all around or you know investors might be coming in and saving this company 
that's great. And you know, I got a lot, I get still get a lot of people moaning about the fact that I gave Aston Martin a bad time, <laughs> and yet the numbers were you know atrocious, very very poor numbers, losing money every single year. Lots of people saying they're going to turn it around. There's new investors coming in. It's all going to be great. And I'm like, yeah, sure, brilliant. But I'm not going to invest in a company based on what might happen. I want to see the actual factual numbers start to change. I want to see signs of growth. I need to see uh, that, that things are increasing. And that might take a couple of years before I jump on the boat. And sure, that's going to make me late for the party. But at least the party's happening. <laughs> you know, I'm not turning up and finding, hang on, when's the party starting? I'm on my own here. Uh, you know, at least the party's swinging and it's underway by the time I arrive. You know, does it make sense? So with Card Factory, this does not tick any of my boxes. This is whilst we've got great revenue growth and it looked promising at the very beginning, these guys are not quite right for me, unfortunately, and they're going in the wrong direction. And as a result of that, they're going to score poorly on the leaderboard because they don't tick the boxes that I'm looking for. But let's go and take a look and see how they got on. Okay, so as a matter of kind of procedure now, let's take a look at the price and what we'll kind of get in for what is essentially 50p a share right now. So the earnings are at about 15 pence a share right now. So if you're buying at 50 pence a share, that's actually not bad. Uh, you're looking at 30% returns. If you were to buy all the outstanding shares in Card Factory today at 50 pence a share, and the earnings were coming through at 15 pence a share, you'd be basically making 30% return on your investment. That's great, but you've got to bear in mind numbers are declining. Numbers have been declining for some time now. And so right now as a snapshot, things look great, but you've really got to factor in as well as uh, the fact that the price looks good now. Is it a good company, right? They're two completely separate factors because and some people, some of my clients say to me, look, you've got this really great company that you found. Why are you not buying more of their shares right now? And I explained to them, because the price isn't right. You can have a glorious looking company that's doing very, very well, uh, but the shares are just too expensive, far too expensive for what you're actually getting in terms of value. So often these prices are too high uh, relative to the underlying value, and that gives you no margin of error. You know, If things don't quite work out so well, you've bought at the very, very expensive price, and therefore really the only way it's gonna come is probably down over time. They're two completely separate things. You've got the viability of the business itself and the profitability and the long-term future of that company. And then you've got price. How much does it cost to buy them right now? It's like any company that you might find. There's going to be a price behind it. And if the price is too high, they might be a great company, but you're not going to be interested as an investor because you'll be paying over the odds for it. Well, what you've got here is good price, but a poor company, a poor underlying business. And so therefore, you're still taking a quite a massive risk by, yes, you're getting in at good price, but what are you actually getting in terms of value? Um, and that value is declining. It has been declining for a number of years. That would be my major concern. So whilst now you might be getting a 30% return a year, that may decline and come to something much worse in the future. And obviously their share price could go to zero eventually. Um, looking at the, the assets, the company have uh, 227 million in equity. There's 341 million shares outstanding. That's an asset per share if you will or equity per share of 66 pence a share again price is 50 pence a share so that's not so bad uh, again that's suggesting that a price of 50 pence for card factory is actually very very good um, that is very cheap you are getting an awful lot for your money my major concern is obviously the long-term future of that share price and for that company and you know the company surviving um dividend wise you're getting a decent dividend as well at 5.8 percent so you know like i say not a great company not one i would invest in but right now price is very competitive and that's all i really got to say on them um let's get them up on the board so i hope none of you are expecting this to be good um because it's not going to be epic code card these guys have scored. Remember, this is the metrics of what we're looking for in terms of are they a company that are going to grow 300, 400% over the next 10 or 20 years? Uh, and do they tick all the kind of the metrics and the criterion that we are looking for, that I am looking for, that signal that this is one of those companies? 
And if they don't meet those criteria, then they, you know, they, they don't score any points for that stuff. If they are on the opposite of that criterion, they get negative points, which is why some of these companies can get negative points. So, you know, a negative score is very, very bad for what I'm looking for. If you're a short-term trader, if you're looking to trade over the next one or two weeks, or you're looking to jump in at 50p and get out at 60p over the next couple of weeks, this is not the show for you. This You really shouldn't be showing, watching this show because this is not what this show is all about. Um, but Card, Card Factory, PLC, score, minus 16 points. So they're going to make it onto the board, but I don't think they're going to be there for very long. Let's get them up on there. Okay, I have no idea why I wrote the name in red pen, but I can't be asked to change that now. Um, we've lost Domino's. Domino's have gone. Who'd have thought? This was the company that everyone was raving about just a few years ago, uh, and they were fantastic for many people. So 2008 to, I think it was about 2014, 2015, they did very, very well, but things just have not been going in the right direction for them in the recent years. And uh, yeah, they're gone. So yeah, very quickly losing these minus number companies uh, on this show but yeah they've made it onto the board card right at the bottom but uh, give it a couple of weeks they'll be gone again unfortunately they're not a company that I am personally interested in uh, they do not tick the boxes for what I'm looking for and uh, too many warning signs there for long term future decline I would say but thank you very much for watching I hope you're finding this show interesting I hope you're getting some value from it and um, drop me a line in the comments below if you want to add anything uh, if you've got any questions at all, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on Thursday's episode. Cheers.